Hello, Team Midwest. I had an opportunity today to play with the Axis Perimeter Defender design tool. Uh, and it was very intuitive and very powerful. And I wanted to quickly get you a video so that you could show off your power after learning this tool for your partners and your end users. If you jump out to the Axis Perimeter Defender homepage on the website uh, and hit the download button, you'll see a compatibility list of cameras. You'll see a download for the actual Perimeter Defender software, as well as the Perimeter Defender tool, design tool. Over on the right, the design tool user manual is available, and it was very helpful as well. Today, I'm going to work on a substation that Ben um, pointed me to uh, that uh, he's working on. Uh, and I'm going to save this as a JPEG um, after I measure the distance from corner to corner. So hit the ruler at the top, which will pop up the this guy right here. <clears throat> Select meters. I've had the best luck with meters in the tool. Hit uh, grab a corner and measure the distance to the other corner. 252 meters. So I'm going to clear this guy out. 252 I need to remember. I'm going to save this as a JPEG. I'm going to call it substation. I already had it saved once, so I'm going to replace it. And I'm out of here. So I'm going to shut down Google Earth and bring up the perimeter defender design tool. This is what it looks like. First thing I'm going to do is click up here on add a map, which will bring in, I can bring in my picture that way. I can scale this thing down depending on my monitor so I can see the whole thing. And now to scale, it's very simple. I hit this button up here that says define the scale. I'm going to put in uh, a line here. I'm going to define the line from corner to corner like I did in Google Earth. I'm going to let it know that that is 252 meters. And just like that, I'm scaled. Very simple. Now I can start adding cameras. So I'm going to hit the plus arrow up here to add a camera. I'm going to pick a thermal 1941 with a 35 millimeter lens. Grab it over here by the number and drop it on the drawing. And now here's my coverage area. If I want to spin that thing, I go over here to the left and pan it. So maybe I want to put it directly down the fence, or maybe I want to put it just inside the fence. To control this a little more granularly, I can hit hold the control button and spin the mouse and drop it where I want. So I could do something like that, potentially. Um, I want to adjust the, the lens. I cannot adjust because it's a fixed lens. The height of the camera, I can adjust. I'll put that up to 16 feet, 4 inches. Um, and I can adjust the distance as well, but you can see that the red area is where I'm able to detect uh, with the uh, analytic. Outside of that, I am not. So I'm going to scale that down again, holding the control key and spinning my mouse to get it back where I'm only showing where I'm detecting it. I can add another camera again with that same button, or I can remove this camera, or I can copy that camera. So I'm going to duplicate it. Camera 2 shows up here in my list. I'm going to grab the 2 and drag it down and drop it on the drawing as well. And then I don't have to repeat everything again. So if I click over here, I can again adjust this where I want it. So you can see how nice this is uh, and how easy it is to use. Um, I can spin the camera all the way around and stick it on this axis if I want to. However, I want to manage it. Um, up here on the top, I can change the IDs. Maybe I want to reverse the ID and call that one 2. Can't have the same value twice, so I'm going to go 3. So I'm going to call this one 1 and call this one 2. Now I've changed the camera ID. I can physically move an ID. I want to get it away from the camera a little bit like that. Um, if I want to do any kind of a measurement, you have the ability to hit this ruler and measure distances as required. You have the ability to put this person in the view. Highlight this guy up here. Put him inside the field of view of one of the cameras. And you can see how much a person who is 1.7 meters tall, uh, how much of the vertical field of view they will consume. So obviously, as I get closer to the camera, I consume more and more of the vertical field of view. So here, I'm roughly a third of the field of view if I stand at this point in front of the camera. Not sure how that would be used, but I'm sure at some point I will figure it out. 
I can then save the project. I could load a new project if I needed to, and I can export the, just the image or a report that gives you the image and a material list. So let me jump out to a folder here and show you what the deliverables look like. So here is that same substation uh, when I've exported a PDF. I get a drawing uh, with the cameras and the detection areas with scale. And if I drag down to page two, I get a material list uh, by model with detection distances, camera height, horizontal and vertical field of view, and so on. So a very, very powerful tool. Um, please play with it. It's very simple, and you're going to impress your customers. Okie doke. Have a good day.